first and foremost, good morning. Thank you very much for joining me on a sort of very overcast uh, Friday morning in the Black Country, but it is Friday, so we can celebrate at least. Um, quick few reminders, of course, obviously this session, I think many of you are probably familiar with this now, are, are being recorded or is being recorded, sorry. Uh, with that in mind, obviously, if you don't want your face to appear in the recording, just leave your webcams off. Um, the link to the recording will be shared around sometime this afternoon or even this morning then when we finish and it will be sort of hosted via a YouTube video. And of course, please do feel free to share that amongst your colleagues and anyone else you may know that might find it useful. Um, I can already see some sort of familiar names in the attendees, so welcome back. Uh, for those that don't know me, just in case there's some of you that don't, my name is Luke Ravenscroft. I am officially Director of Whole School ICT and Computer Science. It's a very fancy way of saying I wear two hats. I am Head of Department for Computer Science and ICT at the school but I'm also responsible for the, the rollout, the whole school rollout for teaching and learning technology. So things like Microsoft Teams and Clash Charts and other familiar platforms to, for the benefit of our students. I am the lead of the EdTech Demonstrator Programme uh, for our sort of uh, St Albans and Bishop Channel Alliance. And I'm a teacher. I like to emphasise that point for the simple reason that I'm a strong believer that the best CPD for teachers and therefore indirectly students is from a teacher. This isn't somebody who hasn't been in the classroom for 10, for 10 years preaching at you as to how to work in a classroom. I am, of course, and I hope people are getting this impression from about me now, more than happy to help people where I can. If you do have a question sort of following on from this session, relation or even not related, please do drop me an email at that address and I'm more than happy to sort of get back to you. And if I don't know the answer, I'll do my best to point you in the direction of somebody that does. So that's me, hello. Uh, agenda for this session, if you attended the, um, best practice for live lessons. This one is possibly a lot more hands-on, a lot more sort of demonstrative uh, than the previous one. Uh, it's going to be a lot of me playing teacher essentially, but also playing students and showing you various features and aspects of the assignment tool from both the teacher and the student perspective. In particular this morning, we're going to focus on two aspects. That is an interactive quiz using Microsoft Forms and then the assignments feature both with and without something called a rubric, which we'll go into sort of uh, as we go into the session. I've also got a uh, desktop and a mobile version of the student perspective to show you. One of the things that we've noticed when we've surveyed our students is that they, they have access to a device, but often it's a smartphone or a smart tablet. So something along them lines, which makes it slightly awkward for them to, um, to access. Now, from there, I'm gonna show you how we can track progress over time. And of course, I'm gonna open it up to any questions as and when uh, there's a, an appropriate time to do so. That said, I am a strong believer in this. I'm a strong believer in that the best CPD is when we sort of talk to each other as teachers. I think the one thing that's gone missing during lockdown, unfortunately, is that ability to have a sort of face-to-face -face discussion or an informal discussion with somebody else from another school. My intention for these webinars, and this one included, is to try and facilitate that conversation. It's been going well so far. And please do get involved with, with that in mind. As I say, the chat is open. Uh, the digital raise the hand is there. Quick point of note for this session, as you'll see momentarily, I do a lot of it on my sort of second monitor over here. So if you do put a question in the chat or raise the digital hand and I've not sort of addressed it within sort of 30 seconds to a minute, please just use the microphone to sort of shout me out and I'll just quickly switch right back to this screen and do my best at sort of answering your question or career that you have. Before we sort of delve uh, into the session this morning, I want to quickly sort of give you a quick overview as to how we've got to where we are. Uh, some of you probably heard this already, so I do apologise. March, obviously, the joy that was lockdown sort of started for us, and we very quickly uh, realised that we need to host work for our students. Like many schools, we adopted for our school website, as it just sort of a convenient place that parents and students were familiar with, as were the staff. Soon realised that student engagement via that method was going to be sort of nowhere near what we wanted. So we started to implement class charts for homework setting across Key Stage 3, introduced uh, Microsoft Teams as well on a sort of whole scale organisational setting at this point, quickly drew some policies up and sort of safeguarding policies in place to allow us to do Microsoft Teams live lessons. And that's where we currently are. We're currently facilitating education for our students through a mixture of live, le live lessons, class charts, and across Key Stage 4 and 5 where possible using the assignments feature in teams as we find it a very sort of useful way, means of assessing but also giving our students work. I'll show this slide again at the end of the lesson, at the end of the lesson, end of the session. Um, as I say, please, please do contact me if you have any questions and I'm more than happy to help, but I'll give that email out again at the end of the session. Right, 
what I'm going to do then is I'm going to introduce you to the setup that I've got over on my second monitor now. Hopefully you can see it. As I say, please do let me know if at the moment you can't see Microsoft Teams being hosted in Google, uh, Google Chrome. But what I've got then on the left hand side on, on this monitor, I've got this window here which is a Chrome window where I am logged in into my teacher account. So down the left hand side here, I can see all of my classes. So I've got EdTech demo, which we're using today, but also my actual um, classes from school. And then behind that, what I've got in this window is Microsoft Windows or Windows 10 to be precise. This is a student account logged into the desktop application if they are working from a laptop or a notebook or a desktop computer. And then on the right hand side over here, what I've got is my smartphone logged into Teams on the student account. So there's two uh, versions that you hope you're seeing. The idea being, as I say, many students that we work with, we know for a fact that they're accessing Teams pretty much predominantly through a mobile device, either a smartphone or a smart tablet. So that's that. The reason there's loads of these sort of different assignments currently there, as you probably imagine in preparation for this assessor, for this um, session, I've been setting um, sort of test assignments, checking things work and so forth. So where we're going to start then is I'm going to quickly sort of show you who's in this class. Now, the EdTech demo class only has two students. You have EdTech student 01 and EdTech student 02. They are the smartphone and the Windows desktop um, students. What I want to do with the assignments is I want to set them to start with a interactive quiz. The idea for this, I want a quick summary of what knowledge they currently know, but I also want it to mark itself. One of the joys of Teams is that I can get it to be um, automatically marked for most, if not all of the questions, depending on what questions I choose. Now, to do that from the assignments tab, I'm going to use the create button down here. I've currently got zero in my draft, zero assigned and zero assessments grade. I've not set anything with this class yet. And I'm going to go create. And then I've got three options, assignment, which we'll come to later on quiz which we're going to look at now and then from existing. From existing simply means that if I've set an assignment, let's say six months ago, that I want to set again or slightly amend, I can sort of copy and paste it and make changes without having to completely redo the setup process. But I'm interested in a quiz. And what quiz will do is it will load my Microsoft Forms. Now, at the moment, I've only got one uh, demo quiz that I've created so far. Uh, so far. But for the purpose of this one here this morning, I'm going to create a new form to show you the process that we go through. So just clicking on new form, what will happen in a new tab, it's going to open forms. Hopefully I'm already signed in. If not, no, we are excellent. If not, it's just the same account details you use to log in to sign, uh, to sign into Microsoft Teams. And I can see that computer science quiz is there. Now, one of the current um, annoyances with this process at the moment is if you accidentally click on new form and create what you believe is an assessment as a form, there is no one click button to convert that yet to a quiz. Microsoft, they know it's an omission. It's one of the most requested features for forms currently. Obviously, teachers are now using this predominantly for remote learning. There currently isn't an, an easy way of converting that to that. So please be mindful when you are creating one of these, you want to use the quiz option down here. Creating the quiz itself is relatively straightforward. I'm going to do one or two questions here. I'm going to do a very basic Capitals of the World quiz. Just as a sort of demonstration, I can give it a description, but for the purpose of this demonstration, I'm not going to. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click Add New. Now, there are quite a few quiz options or question options. Choice, single multiple, cho multiple choice questioning. Text, you can turn into a long, expansive answer. You then have a rating question and also one for a date. They're not really questions the last two. Bear in mind, obviously, forms is also used as a sort of data capture method for a survey. I'm going to take my first one as a choice, and my question is simply going to be, what is the capital of England? Sorry for the keyboard noises. And I'm going to provide a couple of options here. My laptop's currently got a fault where the shift key doesn't work. Left the option two there. I can add as many options as I want. There is no sort of uh, limit. And what you'll also notice is, is it started to recommend me, it's quite intelligent forms, it starts to recommend me options that I can put in. Okay, now obviously that depends on what the topic is going to be, but for cities, probably imagine there's quite a few uh, that you can list for you. I select my correct answer by using the tick on the right hand side here. I can have multiple answers, so if I decide actually this is a question where it selects all that are appropriate, I can do that as well. 
And I can also, if it's going to be a sort of formative assessment or rather a formal assessment, make that question required. The purpose of this one, points, I'm going to assign a single point to this question. I can leave it blank and have no points for an assessment, but if you are doing a quiz where you total the number of points or score that you didn't get, it's quite a nice adding up feature that's done for you. But I'm happy with question one, I'm going to add one more. Now, the last question that I want to add is going to be a text-based question, but what I want for this text-based question is you can do two things. You can have this, for example, Sorry for keyboard noises again. Capital R France. My shift key does not like me. And you can add correct answers. The joy of this I have checked is that if you, capital P with Paris, if a student types in a lowercase Paris there, it will be accepted. You don't need to provide all of the lowercase options. It won't actually let you, if I press enter there, it won't let me enter Paris lowercase because it's already captured with this. So you can have that way of doing it. The other way of doing it, is with a lung answer. Now, if I choose lung, all of a sudden I can't provide a correct answer. This is giving a student a sort of larger text box to enter in a lung form answer. Now, I've used this in the past with my A-level students, my year 12 computing group, as a way of just capturing a nine marker. So all I've done is I've, I've assigned nine points to it and I'm able to get and grade it based upon that. But I'm quite content with that. I'm going to leave that, that question as it is. Obviously, the question doesn't make sense for a long form answer, but I'm going to leave it like so for the purpose of this demonstration. And I'm going to give it four points. I'm quite happy with that now. What I can do, uh, a couple of sort of uh, useful things, I can preview it up here, and I can preview it in both computer, but also mobile, so I can see what it'll look like on a student's device if they're using uh, a smartphone or a tablet. And if I really want to, there are various themes that I can choose uh, school desks because I haven't seen them in ages that I can sort of give um, to the form itself. It's obviously completely up to you how you theme it and there's no difference if you do or you don't theme it. Now that automatically saves as one of my forms. If I go back into forms up here, what I can see, I've got my computing quiz from earlier, but I now have my capsules of the world quiz. Now I'm going to go back into Microsoft Teams. If I go to create again and then quiz, it will automatically be populated there for me alongside my computing one. So I can just select it, press next, and there's a little line here. It will just load it in to the assignments itself. Give it a few moments. There we go, it's off. Now, it automatically picks the title up from the form. Obviously, you can change it to whatever suitable for your students. Enter whatever instructions you want. I'm going to put these complete for now. Obviously, for test purposes, I'll be a lot more sort of uh, descriptive for my students. Who I want to assign it to automatically, it is to the class or the team, in my case, that I'm working within. All students, you can, if you really want to, start specifying who in the class receives this assignment. Maybe you have a student for extenuating circumstances, cannot receive it for whatever reason, you can select them off. And then finally, sort of the date due, I'm going to leave it as tomorrow at 11.59 p.m., but I'm not trying to patronise you, obviously you can change the date and the time there. What I can do, I can save this for a later date, so I don't have to assign it straight away. I could be setting this assessment up where with the intention of making it live as of next Friday. So there's no sort of, they have to have it straight away. But once again, for the purpose of this morning's demonstration, I'm gonna click assign straight away because I wanna be able to show you the student perspective. So click assign. Now, the only downside of using the Chrome version of this is normally this refreshes itself. I have to click refresh. It says, Sometimes I have to kick out a bit and then back into it. And say so it's just the Chrome version. Uh, fully recommend if you are using Teams, you definitely use a desktop version of the application. So I can see then, I'll see it's updated itself now. In terms of assigned, I've got these Capital of the World quiz. I can see how many have currently turned it in. Currently got obviously zero out of two. But you may have heard my smartphone in the background then. I've just got a notification as a student that I've got an assignment mentioned in this class. So I know as a student, I've got a little beep to my smart device, whatever it might be, that I have an assignment due. I can actually click straight on or tap, and it, I can if I don't let it close. I can tap straight onto that, and it's gonna show me my assessments that I need to complete. So this on this phone now, I believe I'm student one on this device, but I'll double check in a second. I'm gonna tap view assignments. I'm signing as the teacher, two seconds. Change the account. There we go. So see at the top, I've got a one unread notification up here. 
if I tap that, this is the assignment from the student perspective. I can tap into it. It will show me the title of the, the work that I've got to do. Any instructions that the teacher has given me, please complete. I've been very blunt at this point and the work that they have to do. So they tap onto it. And probably it's going to happen. They're then given the quiz in smartphone format. So let's go to London. And for now, I'm just going to type in the word answer because I don't want to sort of take up too much of your time. That'll do. Press it autocorrect. I'm happy with that as a student. I'm relatively content that I'm happy with this. So I'm going to press submit. And it's going to tell me that I've submitted it straight away. Now, what I can do as a student, I can view the results immediately. So I can see, for example, that I got one out of one point. So I got it correct. The first question. The second question currently tells me that I've got dash out of four points. The reason for this, the teacher, which I'll show you in a moment, needs to mark that particular question. Because it's a long form answer and there's no sort of automatic generation of an answer, they have to mark it. So as a student, I'm going to close that for now. I've done my homework. I get a lovely little animation, in this case, a unicorn on a rainbow. Why not? And I'm now done. My homework's done. Phone's off into the park to play football. I go. So as a teacher, if I go back here, once again, unfortunately, Chrome won't refresh itself for me. Always use the desktop application. If I go back into assignments, it's going to show me that one out of two have now turned it in. So I can click on that. It will show me the status. I can see that student one, which is the smartphone, it is the smart device, has turned it in. I can provide them feedback. But it also is telling me that there's one point given so far. As I said, the last four points, that's five, four points I need to give myself as a teacher. Um, just got one question in the chat. Will the session be available as a recording to attendees? Absolutely. What I will do, truth be told, I download the video from Sway. Sway. Um, what am I thinking of? I've got the name of it now. Stream. That's the one. There we go. Download it from stream and then I do some basic editing in YouTube, uh, in Rush. I'll take the start, I'll take the end off, you know, any sort of gaps that need filling. It's uploaded to YouTube and then the link will be shared and you can use whatever you want with it and share it to as many people as you wish. Probably looking around midday for that link to go out. But yeah, if I go back over here then, as I say, um, I can, as a teacher, click on turned in. And what it'll do completely in the app that doesn't open a separate window or anything, it shows me the students' responses. So I can see. Also graded for one point, what is the capital of England's London? And then for the capital of France, as I say, the question makes no sense for a long form answer. But as a teacher, I need to specify um, what marks they've got. So obviously, if it's a four mark question, I'm going to give them, I know, three marks for that particular response. And what I can also do, where these little speech bubbles are, I can provide feedback for individual questions. So I can provide feedback here. I probably won't because it's a single form or single question answer. But for this bottom one down here, I can provide feedback for this particular question. What I can also do is use them up here in the grey bar. I can provide feedback for the entire, entire quiz. So good effort, well done. Right after that, so my feedback is complete as a teacher. The last thing I need to do as a teacher, and I'm still not entirely sure whether I haven't built a better button for this, is there's three dots underneath the speech mark at the top here in the grey bar. If I click those, I've got three uh, things. I can delete the response, which I want to do. I can print it, so I can print the student's work if you're at a school that's adamant about having sort of paper trials for feedback. Of course, you can do that. And the button I'm interested in is post scores. What post scores will do is it will give back to that student my feedback. So I'm going to click post scores. It'll ask me, am I sure I am? I am. So I click post. Which I've done. It doesn't look like much has happened, but it has. I can now click close. And in a few moments time, this sometimes takes a few moments. If I go back into assignments. Let's have a look. Yeah. As a teacher, I've now only got one to grade. I've already graded one assessment, returned it. If I click there. I can see the feedback that I gave them, and I can also see what overall score they achieved in the end. As a student, very quickly, Helen, I can see your question. I want to come to you just a moment's time. As a student, if I go back into my assignments and next, and then completed, I've, I've done this quiz now. I can, in theory, he says, hopefully it's worth. I can see my feedback from the teacher. It's good effort, well done. I can see what points I got. 
if I tap onto the quiz itself, I can see the feedback there, but I can also, if I scroll down, see the feedback that particular question that I gave. So that sort of teacher student feedback loop is there. I can give them feedback and the student then can then be sent an email in the email group or in the Teams itself. Feedback is now live for that particular assessment. So they can see it. So they're quite content. They're happy. Homework's done. Off they go for the weekend. I very quickly pause for Helen's question. Do you have a good workaround for variation of correct answers for short form written responses? I presume, Helen, you mean um, uh, if they have uh, various options for where they type in the answer. Truthfully, uh, the only way I've found that I can uh, make various options, and hopefully somebody in the chat or in the uh, via microphone has probably got a better option, is if I'm Forgive me, editing this. Where's edits? Must edit. Oh, not do two seconds. Let's do it this way. If I'm doing one of the short form text answers where I'm using text, unfortunately, I just have to ha add many correct answers on the bottom. And I say, in truth, if it's a, an option where students are typing, I tend to go for the long form answer and then just mark it. Um, via traditional methods as you can on a computer uh, and that way that's how I sort of get the work around because I find it easy in trying to think of every single option that a student li is likely to put in. You can override the marks though so if you think the student's actually got it correct but their spelling is atrocious you can override it and give them the correct mark. I don't know if that hopefully sort of goes some way to answer your question if not please do pop in the chat again and I'll do my best to address it better. Um, just so I can show you both perspectives Desktop student over here has got an activity announcement. They're currently logged in. This would have beat, but I've got this Windows virtual environment set up so it doesn't beat because it gets very frustrating. They've got exactly the same assignments. Pardon, sorry. Oh, was that a question? Sorry. Sure. I think just let, just let me know if it is. Um, I say Windows version, once again, it opens within the app. But um, it's exactly as you, you're expecting. It will just be the form, but loaded in a, in a bigger window for the students to complete. And there you go. One thing I didn't point out is there is an immersive reader. There's this little button next to each question. So if a student is for, for example, EAL or is uh, sort of struggling with uh, written and spoken English, they can have it read out to them or it can be broken down by click that into an easier to read approach. So there are some aspects that are trying to address that those kind of sort of gaps with the technology. But yeah, I won't answer it now because obviously you've seen the process once. The feedback approach is exactly the same. It's just desktop version rather than smartphone version or smart device version. But um, I can see as a teacher, I've still got one to grade who hasn't turned it in and it's this student over here who hasn't done the assignment. I'm going to pause for a moment there because that for all intents and purposes kind of concludes the using the quiz feature and the forms feature. Um, I currently can see no hands up. I think I've answered a question in the chat. Is there any questions before I do continue? As a play, please do fire away at me. I'm more than happy to sort of respond. Can't see anything at the moment. Uh, I've got a hand up. Hi, Louise, you're right. Hi, a silly question because I haven't seen any of your um, fabulous um, tutorials before. But what's the main difference between a quiz and a, for a normal form? Could you put sort of normal assignments into the quiz like you're suggesting because that's really good? Or is the form completely different? Um, the, in terms of the actual use of them, um, I'll show you now actually. Hopefully, you can still see the screen. The big difference is if you do the form option, you can't specify um, that an answer is correct. So you can't have it auto mark itself. Obviously, those were sort of one marker multiple choices or the one marker where you have the situation where the student's just entering a single word answer. It can't mark itself. I actually demonstrate it to you. It looks and this is the annoyance at the moment for us as teachers. It looks absolutely the same as the quiz. However, if I add a question, so capital of England, can't spell today, I do apologise. If I start putting options in, there is no make it the correct answer over here. 
So I can still set it to students or give students this particular form, but every single response is going to need sort of manual marking from yourself. And that at the moment is the key difference for, for quiz use. Forms are, they've been used in our school for a while. We use them for parental surveys. So for example, we use the form to get parental responses to get permission for year 12 live lessons. That's brilliant, thank you. Okay, no worries. I can't see any other questions currently. As I say, please, I've got, sorry, I've got something in the chat. Yeah, Tom's absolutely right. He has, it's very much a form as a survey or a poll or getting uh, sort of uh, data collection, really, whereas the quiz is very useful for this kind of setting. Um, as I say, any questions you do have, please continue to sort of fire them off at me. More than happy to help. What I will say as well is if there's a question you've got that you don't necessarily want to ask right now, you want to stick around at the end, please do. I've got nowhere to be until one o'clock, so I'm OK for time today. Okie dokie, right. So what I'm now going to show you is how we can use the assignments feature to set what I'd call as a more traditional piece of homework, which is here's a Word document worksheet that I'd like to complete and return to me. And I'm going to do two variations of that. I'm going to do one with a rubric or without a rubric first, sorry, and then a second version of it with a rubric. So on my assignments tab, what I'm going to do is click create again and then from existing quiz and assignment, I want assignments in this case, and it takes me straight to this screen that we saw a very uh, similar version of earlier. I need to add a title, so I'm going to do, I'm going to use a nine mark algorithm question. I'm a computer science teacher uh, as my thing, and as my instructions, please complete on the Word documents uh, given. I'll explain why I'm doing that in a moment. Halfway through those, as I say, I'll probably be more uh, descriptive for my students, but I'm now going to add resources. So there's a few options with add resources. If you sign into OneDrive on your device, it automatically comes into your uh, OneDrive class notebook, which I'm currently not using, but Teams. Now, this team that I'm currently in, EdTech Demo, if I had class materials, and I should have put some on there this morning, I do apologize, I could click in here and find the resource that way. If, like me, I'm relatively traditional and keep it on my desktop. I can just choose upload from this device to get my file browser. So I'm already in the folder that I did it earlier today. There's my nine mark algorithm question that I want the students to see. And I'm going to click open. It will go through its usual uploading process. Blue bars done. Click done. And happy with that, it closes itself. And here it is. Now, the key thing that I want the students to be able to do here is I want them to be able to complete it on the given Word document. I don't want them, unless they have to, to be writing it out by hand or having to open Word in a separate window. I want them, using these three dots here, to edit their own copy. Now, of course, there's options where I potentially don't want this. Maybe I want them to do a sort of diagram. There are options in computing where we have to get them to draw diagrams or logic gate circuits. But for this particular question, I'm quite content with them just typing their own answer. So they're going to edit their own copy. Once again, and I'm, I'm going to address points in a few moments time. I can assign points. It's a nine mark question. I'm more than happy to assign it nine marks or nine points. Same to this class by default, all the students in the class. And once again, I'm going to leave it as tomorrow at pretty much midnight, 11.59 as the due date. I'm quite happy with that. So I'm going to assign. And what will happen is this screen. In a moment, my phone's currently off should he says ping with a notification there we go so as a student all those pings are the different ones i got open i've now been set this new assignment by my teacher so i can see that's happened once again tap on it as a student i can see it there it is i'm going to click view assignments there's my assignment and the instructions from the teacher and the word document i'm told there's nine points possible the add work feature, I'm pointing out if I may, that feature there, the add work. Students, if they want to, can add other files from a device. We have a student, for example, who, for reasons I don't quite know, really enjoys writing out the work, the answers via pen. And in truth, it's good exam practice, ultimately that's how they're going to be assessed. If that's how they're doing their work, they can just take a photo of it and you can still mark it digitally using this platform. But I'm going to tap the nine mark algorithm question now. It will load. And what it's going to do is going to show me the question there. 
and then using the top right edit button, so the pen in the little square, I'm able to edit it on device. Now, the only thing to, you need to tell your students here is they have to have Microsoft Word installed on the device in order to be able to edit it on the device, otherwise they can't do it. It's different on the desktop version because the Word is built into Teams, but for an iPhone, like a Zoom, it's the same for Android, you need it installed already. What I can do though, I can easily now, just one the thing, just type in an answer as a student. Obviously, it's a nine mark question. I'm not going to sit here and write out a nine mark answer, but you get the idea they can sort of do that. Now, they don't have to submit it straight away. I, as a student, might think, actually, I've started my homework, but I've been called down for the tea, or I've got to go pick up my uh, younger sibling from somewhere. Cruise the, use the back arrow to go back, go back into Teams and close this. Now, I don't have to press hand in up here just yet. If I tap on my Word document again, it's got my answer that I started typing. It saved my previous work, but I haven't submitted it to the teacher yet. I can come back to it and re-edit it at a later date. But I'm quite happy with that. As I say, I've done my nine mark answer. I'm going to press hand in. Top right corner, I get a lovely little animation. It differs every time you hand a piece of work in. And that is done. I can undo it if I want to. The due date isn't until tomorrow. So I can undo it as a teacher. Now that the student has undone it, if I go back into Chrome and flip between this and the assignments tab again, I can see that I've currently got no one has turned this particular piece of work in. However, if I do click on it, it does tell me who's viewed it. So I know for a fact that student one has at least seen this piece of homework. And let's say I was seeing this group today in a classroom setting. I mean, kind of what a classroom setting looks like nowadays, but I could always give them the extra nod and go, thank you for those that have viewed the homework or already handed it in. If you haven't, as a reminder, it is due tomorrow afternoon at midnight in this particular instance. But I can see that they viewed the homework. I can also see, I believe, their start of their answer. Okay, now I can't see, obviously, they're finished and nor should I start giving it feedback yet because the student hasn't yet handed it in, but I can see their work up until this point. But what I'm going to do as a student, I'm going to back into my smart device on the right hand side here. And I'm just going to press uh, hand in. And I've done it in, it's handed in. Unfortunately, I get the animation once, but once again, as a student, quite content, off of it to lunch, homework's done. Now, student over here on the desktop, very similar approach, activity. Once again, it's been mentioned. It did beat, but obviously the audio is turned off. And there's my nine mark algorithm question that I've been set. Now, this, as I say, is a bit slower. It's running on a virtual machine, but I'll do my best to show you. I can say it's just technology on the morning. There's the question, instructions from the teacher again. Nine mark question. The reason you recommend students use a desktop app if they can is obviously they get access to a full keyboard but also the words, they don't need to have Word installed on the device. This version of Windows that I'm running over here doesn't have Word installed, but I can use Word in device or in app rather, sorry, in Teams. So I can edit document, click make quick changes right here. And then might be a bit slow, as I say, but I'm allowed as a student, once it loads, guess where I'm going with this, to sort of type my response down here. I've want to quickly type some of it to prove that it's actually doing something. It's getting there as a input. Student to answer. There we go. So I can click close as a student. I'm happy. It's just saving now. Save. My work's done as far as I'm concerned. Once again, I can go back into it. Now, the only little nuance I've noticed for reasons I don't think I'll ever understand is the desktop app application calls it turn in. Whereas the smartphone implementation, the app implementation calls it hand in. I don't know what the difference is, to be honest with you. There's no difference, it's just terminology. So that's handed in, get a nice sloth this time animation, and we're done. Both students are quite content, off they go, they're happy the work's been done. Now, as a teacher, if I quickly refresh my assignments tab again, I can see for this nine mark question, I've got two out of two. I've handed this in so I can click onto it. I've got two that I need to grade. Now, this is where I really like uh, Teams. I set a lot of work like this style where I'm giving the Word documents to complete or to fill in. If I click on it, there's no downloading an extra Word document. I'm going to open Word on my device. It just does it in house here, which I really like. Now, feedback I can do here. Here is your feedback, student one. Well done. 
and because it was a nine mark question, I choose to give it points. I could give it, let's say it's a good response, it got an eight. What I also like about this as a teacher, I can actually edit their document. So I can make quick changes myself to the document where I might write, for example, in red or green or a different colored font. And I can sort of mark their work and highlight their work as I would if I was doing a sort of piece of uh, paper based homework. So I'm going to quickly just put some at the end of this answer here. Come on, catch up. There we go. Tap that, please. Yeah, I'm going to put. Um, I'll just change the colour again. But like so. There we go. And as I say, once again, as a teacher, I'm, it's saved, it's automatically saved every single time. There's the feedback, there's the points. I've made some on document edits for the students to sort of help them uh, improve their answer. It could be grammar correcting, etc. Click return. And it's returned. Points have been given. I can close. Quite happy with that. So close. As I say, the, never ever just use the desktop. Uh, no, never just use the the browser-based version. The desktop version is superior in pretty much any aspect. So if I go to the nine mark algorithm question again, I'll be able to see I've graded one of them. I can see the feedback I give them immediately. There's their points, and I've got one more to grade over here. If I quickly show you up here what I've actually got on my smart device now is if I go to my activity. And back into that piece of work and view assignments. I can see the feedback is there. I can see the points that I've got. But I also, if I click onto the Word document, will be able to see the teacher feedback that I've given. And I won't necessarily show you because I'm conscious of time. But as you probably imagine, it's exactly the same on the desktop version, just in a in a bigger window for the students to see. So that's how I've sort of used that feature. And in truth, I like the quiz option. But I'm very, because I teach a lot of key stage five with sort of long form answers, that kind of sort of implementation of the assignment tool is really beneficial to me in what I do. Uh, I've got a question here. Uh, I've got two questions actually, sorry. Uh, uh, Tom, I think, would they need to finish that in one go? Or does it save it as a draft for them to come back to? I think we went through, but it, it does sort of save automatically as they go along. You can continue to re-edit so they can they can also actually if I show you student two here up until the due date they can undo the turn in so if they have a conversation with a pupil at school and they think oh no I've made a terrible mistake they can undo it and continue to re-edit it so that they can edit it right up until the deadline and undo the turn in as many times as they wish question from Martin once a student has turned in their work well, yet yeah, they do have access to the document we've just gone through that hope that's answered the question and the question from Helen is there anything else the students need to do in terms of installing Word on a mobile device? Is it a simple install? Or do they need to do this as part of the school's license? No, they can download Word from the App Store. It will ask them to sign in. It's exactly the same login details that they're using to access Teams. And um, once they've done it once, it remains signed in. So there's no sort of secondary uh, login details. The school license covers it, and it will be covered just through the uh, one-time sign-in feature. And hopefully that sort of gives some advice there as well. But as I say, it's just download the app and sign in using your credentials. What I quickly want to show over here, as I'll stop the questions in a second, is the grades feature. And I've got a new message. Uh, uh, so I'm saying we experimented with the assignment tool and kept getting error message when trying to upload JPEG images as answers. We've no explanation of why it wasn't accepting them. Any idea why that might have happened? Um, no, unfortunately, it is the short answer. However, what I will do, as I said at the start, if you want to sort of stay on the on this conversation uh, at the end of the session, it's something we can definitely look into, and we can see if there's a workaround or something that we're not necessarily doing correct. I'm more than happy to do that. I say I don't top of my head. I don't know why that would be an issue. I'm afraid. If I quickly show the grades tab. Then it's something that I've sort of ignored for the moment. If I click on grades, what this does, it's very much a sort of glorified Excel spreadsheet where it shows me um, what the students have um, done. So I can see that student one, for example, on the Capital of the World quiz got four points. I can see for the nine mark algorithm question, um, the student got uh, eight points. And I can see that student two, which is the desktop version so far, has viewed the Capital of the World quiz and has turned in their work. I haven't yet marked it. However, what I can do, let's say, for example, the student two 
was a student who didn't have access to a digital device at home and they were returning homework just via paper base, which, you know, traditional. I can go into that box and I've marked it on paper and they got a seven. OK, so I can still use this to track all of my students, irrespective of whether or not they're actually using Teams to complete the work. If you have students, as I do, that can't access it, you can use this as a tool to uh, track it. You can also obviously export that to Excel then, and it's very then easy. It's easy, very easy then to integrate into whatever sort of marking policy you currently use. Right. Um, as I say, Tom, I'm going to have a look at addressing your question with the image um, towards the end of the session. Before I go on to the sort of final part of this, the rubrics, is there any questions regarding what I've just shown with the assignment feature? As I say, please use a digital hand in the chat. Oh, no, no worries. I'm more than happy to um, have a look. I think I've got, I I I got a hand somewhere. I've got a hand from yourself, Helen. Hello. Sorry, um, when you've got the grades on there, there are certain tabs that the students can't see. So things like insights they can't see, can they? Can all of the students see everyone's grades? Um, don't believe so. I'm going to double check now. Um, so we'll, so the desktop's a bit slow on this one. Uh, no, they can't. They can only see their own. Perfect. Thank you. No worries, good question though, thank you very much. I don't believe there's any other hands. Once again, just interrupt me at any point, I'm more than happy to make this as informal as possible to sort of help us all. Right then, um, so final thing on a Friday morning is rubrics. So the best way of describing a rubric is to show you, but I, as probably an unintelligible way of calling it. It's a digital mark scheme that I can use to sort of blanket mark work. Now, I'm going to create a new assessment down here. I'll confer their third and final piece of homework for today, and I'm going to use an assignment. Now, this particular assignment I'm going to do is going to be uh, something that's very common for us in computer science, which is a programming question, and it's a function-based uh, pseudocode question. Let's say, one of a better way of putting it, I'm going to give them the scenario and they're going to write, write some fake code that follows the correct logic. Uh, instructions, once again, please complete on the Word document. It's what I'm used to. You can, as I say, get into other ways, and we are going to look at can we use images later on. And then add resources. Now, the resources that I want to add this time, once again, it's on my device. I should have uploaded it to the class, but I haven't. And it is this function question. Now, if I click open, let me upload again. And then done. Disappear. There we go. Probably got students can't edit. Need to make it so that they can. And so I, I want them to edit their own copy. And I could assign points, but as I say, what I want to do this time is I want to add something called a rubric. Now, if I click add rubric, what it will do, it'll load this window. Now, like forms, if you've got ones that you've previously used, they will be listed here. You can upload them as CSV files, which we'll come to in a moment but I'm going to create a new rubric for the purpose of this demonstration. So if I click there, what I have is this particular thing. So I'm going to call this uh, function question marking grid, um, a marking grid or typical for mark uh, function questions. It's a very sort of common feature on a paper two of the A-level computing courses is why I'm using it. Now, what I've got here then is grading criteria. I've got a colleague that uses this brilliantly. We do a BTEC ICT course and they use it for the sort of pass merit distinction, distinction start to a degree, sort of grading criteria to sort of mark students' work. What I'm going to want is um, I'm going to have, let's have another one, don't I? New category called not applicable, i.e., you have not submitted a solution or submission is not valid, not valid for marks. I'm going to have what I'm going to leave as poor for now, as I, I can change the word into what I um, wish. Solution is not logically correct, and there are syntax errors through out. Fair. Solution follows some sound logic, but syntax 
errors are common. Um, good. Solution is logical and there are few, if any, syntax errors. Um, solution is not the most efficient way of doing it. It's a very common feature of efficient way of doing it. A very common feature for computer science, which is there's always more than one way of doing it. We want, we want the most uh, efficient. And then excellence, I want uh, sound efficient. Start wrong. Solution with no syntax errors. So the best we can hope for, no errors, and it works perfectly. Now, this description on the left just describes this row. What you can have is you can have multiple rows. So let's say, for example, I was going to mark, um, forgive me, English teachers, but points, evidence, and explanation. I can have different uh, rows. Obviously, I can delete as I see fit. Quick uh, insight onto this. Somebody very rightly, and I'm very pleased they pointed it out the other day during the, 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 the copy of this session, there's a limit of 20 columns. Now, I'm currently using five here. Um, a teacher in that chat did point out that they are an English teacher at GCSE, and please forgive me if I'm incorrect here, but one of the ass uh, assessment uh, gradings for something, I say that's as far as my knowledge of English goes, requires 23 marking uh, grid columns. So obviously it is a feature they've requested more for, but once again with Teams, who knows when it might be implemented, hopefully before September at least. But yeah, there's a limit of 20 columns. What I can do is I can use points, so I can turn them on and you can see at the moment I've got one point for not available or not applicable. I want that as zero, I want poor as one, fair as two, good as three, and then an excellent four mark question, naturally going to get the four marks. It is percentage, so four marks will get them 100%, three will get them 75 and sort of so forth. You can even redistribute, redistribute weights, that is if you've got quite a few rows, you can have it so I don't know, 80, 10, and 10, or if I've got, I can't do the maths, four rows, if I click that button, it will redistribute it to be 25 for each. So you can have it however you see fit, really. So I'm happy with that. As I say, that's gonna be, it's gonna be 100% for a correct answer, and I'm gonna attach that. So what's happened now, it's worth, let's say four points, because it is worth four points, and the rubric has been attached over here. So other than that, everything's as it was, assigned to all my students, the date due is tomorrow. Quite happy with that. The Word document's there, they can edit it, they've got instructions, they've got a title, click assign. Now, once again, my phone, hopefully, very soon. He says. There we go. Has beeps to tell me that I've got this uh, so Twitter notification as well. Um, so if I tap that, I can then see my function-based pseudocode assignment that I've been given. If I view the assignments, what I've got is, as a student now, once again, I can see the title of it, the instructions, the Word document that I've been given, how many points are available, but I can also see the rubric. So as a student, if I tap that, I can see what I'm gonna be graded on here. I can see what my work is gonna be assessed against. And there's only one option, there is only one element to the I haven't got multiple rows, so I can't use the drop down to see different ones. If I go back and then view my assignment again, I'm going to go into the Word document, edit on device again, I say because I'm signed in it will just open it automatically, and I'm just going to once again, I'm going to complete it with student one answer. Happy with that, back I go to Teams, let's just check it's worked. Yeah, there is student one answer. Once again, tap hand in. I've got a, a slot eating an ice cream, I think this time, even better. Students happy, work's been handed in. Back we go. Off I go, you know, doing whatever I wanted to do as a student. As a teacher, back in my assignments, I can see for my function-based pseudocode question, once again, I've got one out of two turned it in. That's all on the smart device. If I tap it, once again, student one's turned it in. Now, when I mark it though, if I click it, it will open it over here. I can provide um, specific feedback, but what I can also do is click the rubric and specify which option. I think actually their answer is good, but there's a few syntax errors in it. So I'm going to give them good. Automatically assigns them points. Once again, I can give them 
um, bespoke feedback if I wish. And I can also once again edit the document and perhaps use red font again if I wish to make amendments to their work and correct the syntax errors or at least highlight where they are. Happy with that, click return. As a teacher, I'm done. Um, just as a sort of caveat here, actually, before I leave this page, if you've got more than one student's completed the work, you can use the drop down here to see their work. Obviously, student two has done nothing yet, so there won't be anything to mark, but I can use a drop down or even flick between the arrows to see the different students. I don't have to keep closing it and going back in. So giving feedback is relatively easy, I find. But just to show you how that's worked for the student, if I go back over to the smart device, open it up, back to my assignments at the bottom, EdTech demo, next, completed. There it is, function-based pseudocode at the bottom. I can see I've been given three out of four points. As a student, once again, I can check why. I can see that the teacher's given me this one here. And if the teacher had given me bespoke feedback, I haven't in this particular instance, it would also be, hang on, forgive me, wrong page. It would be here as well. The, just above points would be the feedback for that particular exercise that I've given bespoke. So that's a rubric. Um, common questions I get asked is, can you um, use the same rubric twice? You can. If I go back to my assignments and go to create again, and then assignments, if I want to add rubric, I can, where is it? Here we go. See it there. So function question marking grid. Now I can just click next. I think I can edit it. I oh, know I can, sorry. I can edit it down here and I can sort of attach it again. What I can also do, and I believe maybe not on the browser version looking at it, I can choose to upload a rubric. You can export, let me try some actually. You can export rubrics as, yeah, you can't on this version, you need to on the desktop app, as a CSV file. And then all you do, if you want to share that rubric with a colleague, maybe you both teach the same um, course, but to do different classes, you can download it as a CSV file, send it to them via email, even in the team, and they can just upload it at their end to um, have exactly the same marking grid that you have. We have every intention of using this as a way of marking sort of um, uh, key stage free homework where we're setting the same task, especially in year seven on a computing one hour a week course, they might do the same activity as a way of each other and then doing it that way. Got a question from Helen in the chat. Is there any way of checking submissions without going into each individual class as an overview? What you can do as a teacher, and this, I don't know if that necessarily answers your question, I'm obviously logged into my teacher account on this uh, Google Chrome window over here. If I click assignments, what I get is a list of all of my classes. So you can see I've got all my teaching classes and then my EdTech demo. Click that, click next. And then I kind of get a similar view to what the students got, which is they can see the work like so. And I then go back into this view. I don't know if that's necessarily what you're, you're asking for though, Helen, I'm afraid. Um, what I was asking was whether or not, because I, I can do that um, and I look at that's how I tend to look at things through the assignments view, but I tend to find that I'm having to go onto that assignments tab, go through my classes and just check where they are because this is early days and it's not kind of standard form for us yet. I'm yeah. checking periodically to see who has and who hasn't. And I didn't know if there was any way of being able to see something that's wider. In, in, in terms of like a, a, a big list of who has and who hasn't com uh, completed the work. Something along those lines. Yeah, um, I won't lie to you. I don't necessarily know of a solution. Uh, if anybody in the chat does or any, anybody that's currently on the call knows a sort of a better way of view it, viewing all the work, please do let us know. As I say, I don't know off the top of my head, I'm afraid, that this is just how I'm used, sort of used to using the assignments feature. But um, yeah, sorry, I can't give you a better answer than that. No, that's great. Thank you. Right, so if I go back to my team, here we are. Uh, that pretty much, I think, unless I'm mistaken, is the free features that I wanted to sort of demonstrate in Teams today for, oh, with the assignments tool for you today in Teams. Um, of course, if there are any questions, um, please do let me know. I'm currently looking at the chat box. I'm also looking for the, the digital raise hand feature. I'll give it a few moments. I've got a hand somewhere. Got a hand from yourself, Helen. Sorry, it's me again. No, go um, for it. When you were talking about importing and exporting rubrics, so if we had something 
like a, a mark scheme that you've just demonstrated, would we still have to kind of transcribe it into the grid? Or if we had an existing file, could we upload a file that was of a mark scheme? Um, what I've done is I've when I've gone to create, so for example here, and I've got a, a new rubric, I've had to do exactly, exactly the same thing on my computing course. I've basically copied and pasted from the mark scheme as a sort of, you know, sort of um, mm -hmm. rudimentary way of getting it in there. But once it's in there, it's in there kind of thing. No, that makes and, sense. And I say you can then, there's no, unfortunately, because all the, the mark schemes tend to be PDF documents and they're all formatted in different, uh, different ways. Unless I'm mistaken, once again, there isn't necessarily an easy workaround to that. Um, I do know teachers are currently um, uploading quite a few rubrics to certain platforms. TES, for example, has quite a few now that have been uploaded. So, but as I say, at the moment, it's just copy and paste, I'm afraid. No, that's perfect. Thanks. No worries. Questions from the uh, Louise, unfortunately, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm afraid I don't have uh, time to go through the class notebook. Unfortunately, the resources for that aren't yet prepared. What I can do, if you uh, drop me an email, I'll put my email address on the board again, I'll send you everything we've got for the class notebook at the moment. So as I say, the webinar demonstration isn't necessarily set up with what I've currently got um, booted at the moment, I'm afraid. But as I say, if you drop me an email, I can very much send you the resources we have. Um, Right, so I'm going to sort of stop sharing that screen now. Um, all I'm going to do, um, I say it's very much the end of this of the of the session now. I'm going to very quickly on that screen or on the screen that we can all see, very quickly flash up my sort of contact details again. As I say, anything anybody needs, please, please do get in touch. As I say, I'm more than happy to sort of support and provide help where I can. As I say, with things that I do know. Um, if I quickly find it for you, there you go. My email is just at the bottom of the screen there. That was me before I had a DIY haircut in the garden. Um, please let me know if there's anything I can do. Um, other than that, um, I hope it's been useful for you. There will be a YouTube version of this, which I'll send round to all attendees, probably probably a bit midday, really, given the editing time now. Um, other than that, if you want to stay on and ask any further questions, great. If not, have a wonderful Friday, have a wonderful weekend. If I don't speak to you prior, have a wonderful um, uh, summer break. I think we've all learned it this year and hopefully I'll speak to you soon. Take care.